Nux provides a runtime config API to expose configuration and secrets within our Nux applications. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what it's used for and how to configure them properly. So let's get started. Now, before we jump in, if you are interested in improving your front end skills, then be sure to check out an application that I've been working on called Web Dev Daily. It's a platform that offers daily coding challenges to complete within an innovative VS Code like browser IDE. In addition to improving your coding skills, once you complete a challenge, it will then be added to your profile, which can act as a portfolio that you can share to show off your front end skills. And you're also able to learn from other developers by checking out their solutions as well. Now, if you want to acquire hands-on experience and practice like a professional developer would, we recently launched projects. These projects are going to put you in the world of a professional developer, equipping you with detailed Figma designs and a series of well-structured tasks to complete. So if you are interested in improving your front-end skills, then be sure to click on the link down below in the description. It's free to sign up. All right, so the Runtime Config API is used to expose environment variables and private tokens within your application. And these can be things such as API keys or any other sensitive information that you want to keep private. So what I have here is a small diagram to show you the process of how this works within a Nux3 application. So first off, you're normally going to have all of your secrets stored in what is called a environment variable file or a .env file for short. Then within our nuxconfig.ts, we can define a property called the runtime config. And here we can declare all the variables that we want to expose to our Nux application. And what we do is when we declare these variables, we set them to the values of our variables inside of our env file. And depending on whether or not they're private or public, we can then access those either on the client side or on the server side within our Nux3 application. Now, a common time where we might want to take advantage of the runtime config API is if we were making an API request that requires an API key. So say, for example, we have an endpoint called API slash testing. And for this endpoint, we're going to create a new server route and that file is going to be called testing.js. Now, within this server route, we can use a composable that is provided to us by Nux called use runtime config. Now, what this composable does is it's going to look inside of our Nux configuration file and specifically the runtime config property, which is going to have all the variables that we define that we want to expose to our Nux application. And it's going to return those to us here inside of our server route so we can securely use that API key within our request to fetch that data from the API. Now, it is worth noting that you can also use the use runtime config not only on the server side, but also on the client side. However, only variables that are deemed public within the runtime config are going to be returned on the client side. And we'll be looking at this more throughout the video as well. All right. So now that you have a general idea of how the runtime config API works, let's see how we can use it within a Nux3 application. So here I have a brand new Nux application that I just spun up. So the first thing we want to do is head over to the Nux config file. And within here, you want to define what is called the runtime config property that we talked about just a few moments ago. Now, to keep things consistent with the example that we talked about when working with an API, the variable we're going to create is called API key. And just for now, we're going to set this equal to a string with a value of one, two, three. And later on in this video, we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how we can set these up using some environment variables. All right. So now that we have this set up, what we're going to do is we're going to test this out uh, within a server route. So let's go ahead over to our server folder and we're going to create another folder within here called API. And then within this folder, we're going to create a file called testing.js. And within here, we just want to say export and then we'll say default. And then we want to define our event handler. And this accepts a callback. Now, within this callback or within our server route, what we want to do is you want to obtain our API key from our runtime config. So how do we do that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. So what we want to say or what we want to do is create a new variable and we'll call this config. And we're going to set this equal to the composable that we talked about earlier called use runtime config. All right. And then just to go ahead and see this, we're going to say console.log and we'll do config like this. And then we can just return out of here. And now if we open up the console, which I already have this application spun up on localhost, and we head over to the browser and we uh, hit the endpoint of slash API slash testing. And that's obviously going to do nothing. But if we head back over to our terminal, you can see now since we're logging out to config, we're going to see our API key being returned here inside of our terminal.
So as you can see here in the terminal, this composable does return us quite a bit of information. Now, since we only really need the API key for this example, if we wanted to, we can actually destructure this response to only get back that API key. So what we can do is instead of saying cons config, we can say cons and we can destructure the response with our brackets and we can say API key like this, which is a name that we provided to it here inside of a runtime config property. So now if we save this and update our console.log, and we save it and we head back over and we hit this route again. And here inside of the terminal, you can see that I hit this endpoint about four times, but instead of being returned this entire config, we're now only getting the value of our variable of API key. All right, so as I mentioned earlier, we can also use this runtime config on the client side if our variable is public. Now, by default, any variable that is defined within the runtime config is going to be private. If you do want to create a public variable, what we want to do is inside of our runtime config property, we want to define another property called public, and then we can define all the variables that we want public within here. So let's just create another variable and we'll call this API base, and we'll just set this to a string of slash API. And now if we head over to one of our view files, we'll just select on the app.view, we should be able to access that runtime config variable here inside of our view file on the front end. So we can access it in the script if we want to. So what we can say is const and we can destructure this and we can say, I think we said API base like this and we can set this equal to the composable called use runtime config. However, with our public key, if you recall from the last payload that we received when we were working on the server side, it's actually going to be stored in a additional property called public. So we need to attach that to here as well so we can just structure it. And then if we say console.log and we say API base, we should now see that right here. Now, if you want to access this value here inside of the template, you don't actually need to create a reference to it like we are here inside of our script. So inside of the template, what we can actually do is we can use our much test syntax and we can say dollar sign config. And then we want to access the property of public. And then we want to say API base. And if we save this, then we should see this value of slash API being outputted here inside of our browser. All right, so the next thing we're going to take a look at is configuring our runtime variables with environment variables. So right now, our variables are being defined with just some hard-coded strings in here, which is something you really don't want to do because, for example, with this API key, it's private. When we push up this code, then this is going to be exposed within this configuration, which we don't want to have happen. So instead, we'll opt to configure these with environment variables. So here inside of our Nuxt app, we're going to need to create an env file since we don't have one already. So within our Nuxt app folder, let's go ahead and create this. We'll say .env like this. And then what I'm also going to do is split this to the left so we can see both the config and also the env file here. And then we'll just collapse this as well. Now, when it comes to configuring these runtime variables with env variables, the most important thing that we need to make sure we do is name them correctly within our env file. And what I mean by this is say, for example, here inside of our .env file, we create a new environment variable and we call this other API underscore key like this. And then we set it equal to, let's just do one, two, three, because that's what we've been using. And then if we save this and then we head back over to our runtime config, and then we can update our reference to our API key variable to this new environment variable we just went ahead and created. Now, this is something very common that I see a lot of developers do when using the runtime config, but this is actually the wrong way to do it because although this will work at build time, it's actually going to break during the runtime. So the recommended way to configure your runtime variables or runtime config variables with your env variables is to keep the same naming convention so what you want to do is if you hover over your variable you can actually see we're going to get a tooltip and it's recommending that we actually call this nux underscore api underscore key so you want to append the keyword of nux and then underscore followed by the name that you provided here inside of your runtime config which is api underscore key so it's just splitting uh, the two words up via camel case with these underscores. So here inside of this env file, let's update this variable name correctly. So instead of saying other, we're going to replace this with nux and then we'll save this. And then what we want to do is you want to make sure that we have the correct name here inside of our nux config as well. So the other thing we want to do is create one for our public variable we have of API base. Now the one gotcha with this is how we name it. So currently for our private keys, we have the uh, nux underscore being appended to the name of our variable. Now when it comes to public variables, 
we need to actually append this with nux underscore public. So what we want to do is we'll copy this down and then we'll also replace key with base. And then we also want to say underscore public here as well. Okay, if you don't do this, then this is not going to work when we assign it via the environment variable. So we also want to do is we'll just change this to slash API like this. We'll save that and then we'll just copy this here and then we'll replace it with the association to our variable of API base. But we also want to make sure that we have the correct variable here as well. And to ensure that everything is working after we created this env file, you may need to restart your Nux development server. And with our server restarted, if we head over to the browser and we click on refresh, as you can see here, slash API is still being outputted. And then if we do slash API slash testing like this, and we head back over to the terminal, you can see that we're still getting logged out one, two, three. Now there are a few more things that I quickly want to highlight about the runtime config and that is that you can also use the runtime config within your middleware. So say for example we have a custom middleware file here and for whatever reason we want to use our runtime configuration variables within our middleware we can do so using the composable that we have seen throughout this video called use runtime config. And not only can we use them within middleware, but we can also use them when defining plugins. So say for example, we have this plugin file and we wanna access our runtime config. We can do the same exact thing by using the use runtime config composable. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for today's video on Nux's runtime config. So let's quickly just kind of highlight some of the main points that we covered here in this video. So first off, private runtime configuration variables can only be accessed on the server. You can't access those on the client side. Now, with public variables, you can actually access these both on the server and the client. Now, when configuring your runtime variables with env variables, it's a good idea that you match a naming structure that you have defined within your runtime config object for those environment variables to avoid any issues. Now, when it comes to defining your environment variables, not only should you match a naming structure of what you have inside of your runtime config object, but for private variables, you want to make sure that the variable name starts with nux underscore, and for any public variables, you want to make sure that it starts with nux underscore public. All right, so that is pretty much everything that we covered here throughout this video. So hopefully you enjoyed it and you're able to learn something new. If you did, be sure to leave a like on it down below and subscribe for more content like this. And if you are interested in learning more about Nux3 for myself, I am working on a Nux3 course. Now it isn't out just quite yet, but if you want, you can head over to learnnux.dev and you can join the waitlist. But anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.